Hey everybody, uh, today I wanted to go over what I find to be one of the most useful uh, applications that you can use for Dungeons & Dragons, which is the Aurora Builder, which is a completely free character builder that includes pretty much the en entire compendium of available source material for D&D, 5th uh, edition anyways. Um, it's interesting because uh, the material has been released, or I should say the the most basic of material has been released by Wizards of the Coast for free use. I believe they call it SRD. Um, I'm, I can't remember what it's short for, but that's basically you can use the Player's Handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide, and the Monster Manual. I think the Monster Manual. And maybe one other book like um, Sword Coast or something like that. And other than that, you have to buy the materials. You either have to buy the hard copy or you have to buy digital rights or whatever they offer. Uh, which can be very expensive. I want to say that 5th edition is up to 15 plus publications at this point, maybe even more. And so to have all the material at the ready if you wanted to build a character or run a campaign that utilized everything available, uh, or most things available beyond the, the very basics of 5th edition, then you have to spend a good amount of money. Most books cost between $30 and $50 a piece, and if you're looking at collecting upwards of 10 books, that's quite a, quite a lot, you know? Um, and so uh, Aurora Builder, as you'll see here, and I'm going to walk you through installing it and getting it set up, and uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of the basics of character creation, but might save that for another video. Aurora Builder, uh, through means of various file sharing techniques, uh, basically makes all of the material available for free in one place uh, in a very lovely, you know, application layout. So, uh, hopefully I'm recording all of this correctly. I'm, every day I make a new video, it's like I'm trying some new recording process I've never done before, but hopefully this works out. I've got my screen capture going here, and we're going to get started by opening up a standard web browser. Um, and hopefully you guys can see that there. And we're going to go to, I want to say it's aurorabuilder.net, but... Let's see what we get here. Uh, aurorabuilder.com. Okay. So you want to open that up. Uh, this is the page here, and you want to click on download. So that's going to get you the basic installer for the application. Uh, now the setup process is slightly, you know, sort of tiered. It's not just as simple as installing the application and boom, you're off running. Uh, when you install the main application, what you're going to get is uh, the basic, I want to say you get the basic materials, the, the SRD, and I hope I have that acronym correct. Um, the SRD material that's provided by Wizards of the Coast, which anybody could get anywhere anyways. Uh, on you know within their nice little plugin or within their nice little application that they have that it plugs into um, There's a few steps beyond that that unlock sort of all of the additional material uh, Completely free of charge and not just free of charge, but up to date So one of the nice features about the application is once you get it set up and you get sort of all of the, the different sources plugged into it uh, it keeps itself consistent and up-to-date as new releases become available as the documentation, uh, like I said, this sort of like file sharing documentation that I'm assuming regular people or people that work on the project with Aurora are maintaining as consistently and as frequently as possible so that when you're playing and you're opening Aurora to build a new character or to update a character, you're using what would be the equivalent of, you know, having the books in front of you. Okay, so now that we've got that downloaded and taken care of, and I have no idea what was going on with the download, I checked my internet connection while that was going, and I was pulling in well over 110 megabits per second, so I, I don't know what's going on there. But now that we have that downloaded, we want to go ahead and open up uh, your download location. Um, and let's see here. We've got that downloaded, we've got Aurora set up, it's going to come down in the zip folder. You can run it directly out of the zip folder, though I prefer to actually extract generally to the same location there we go so now you've got Aurora actually extracted and you can go ahead and run the setup Windows likes to try to prevent you from running any third-party applications that haven't been certified through like Microsoft uh, if you just click uh, you know advanced you can do run anyways all right Let's make sure you guys can see all this. So here's the installer, super basic stuff. Uh, you click on next, you accept the license agreement. It's gonna ask you where you wanna install it, whatever your fastest drive location or wherever you have space. Uh, because you're gonna be moving some files to this, you do wanna put it somewhere where you have a little bit of space. For me, my C drive is my faster drive, so we'll go with that. 
any random pop-ups that you get like this, obviously just accept. Windows is constantly trying to get in the way of progress. Click on finish and you're good to go. So closing out of these two, minimizing down to the desktop. Uh, let's see here. You guys can see here in the browser, we've got Aurora. Launch Aurora Builder. And this is the actual application itself. So like I said, you could go from here and use the standard, you know, the basic release documentation, which is pretty much just the three starting guides. Um, but what we want to do is we want to download the additional content. And I'm actually just clearing up some Aurora files right here. So this is what Aurora looks like when it opens. Maximize that for you so you guys can see. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's got um, character building from the beginning here. Uh, you can look through the build section once you have a character that you're working on or once you have a pre-built character that you want to go in and edit. Um, and once you're in there, you can see all your build options, your magic, your equipment. You can manage the character by adjusting their XP, leveling them up, things like that. Um, you can view the character sheet. You can produce a PDF. You can produce a fillable PDF with fields that you can actually type into. Um, but let's get started with adding in the additional content that I mentioned. So right here on the screen, you can see there's additional content. You want to click on that. Uh, it's basically going to open up this, it's almost like a browser um, uh, web address field page. And all you're really going to do is you're going to go back to Aurora. You're going to click on additional content. So kind of a two plus two equals four type thing. Um, scroll down to repository on GitHub right here. You're going to click on that and it's going to open the repository on GitHub. Again, pretty straightforward. Scroll down to the bottom here and you're going to see these five separate links. Those are the index links to the collections of additional source material that you're basically going to point the application at. And that's what allows them to constantly, you know, update and stay current. So all you're going to do is right click on, starting with the first link, uh, right click on the link, click copy link address, move back to Aurora, paste that link address into this field, and click on download. And you're going to see my numbers aren't going to update the same that your will update content files right here. I have a one because I'm only behind on one file update. You're going to see that climb up 40 or 50 uh, and that green number is going to continue to grow as you do. Um, then, so once you've done that, that file is sort of like locked and loaded and ready to go, that, that index. But rather than index one at a time, first we're going to go back to Aurora. We're going to grab the next link. We're going to copy that and we're going to plug it in here paste it, click download, and again, you're going to see your update content files number jump. Mine's only jumping one because I recently had a, a Aurora installed and all the files are still stored on my system, so it's not seeing anything necessarily new. Uh, you're going to see those numbers continue to jump, uh, you know, possibly even a couple hundred depending on uh, what's available when you install. Um, again, back to Aurora, and it's sort of like, you know, rinse and repeat. You're just going to do all five of these pasting it in. The one that you can choose to skip if you feel like you don't want it uh, is going to be the, th the bottom option, which you can see here is actually homebrew. You read through these, you get core materials, supplements, unearthed arcana, third party, and then homebrew. If you're not interested in having homebrew material, you don't need to install that. That's fine. I mean, you don't need to install any of these that you don't want. Um, but I feel like having them all just in case I'm ever interested is worth it. Um, Again, I apologize for the clunkiness. This is my first time trying to use like two monitors, plus a camera, plus a screen capture, plus my desktop microphone. A lot going on. All right, so once you have all of, all five of the links downloaded or whichever ones you want to download, downloaded, uh, you can go ahead and click on Update Content Files. And it's actually going to run through those index uh, locations and pull through any material that you don't have. It's basically doing a compare between what you have on your system and what's available at those index addresses. And if there's anything that doesn't match up, it'll grab the missing documentation. That's how you, maintain, you stay current. That's how it maintains you know, the up-to-date documentation. Um, so for me, it's gonna run through and do a quick check. It's probably not gonna take as long as it will for you, uh, but you pretty much wanna wait until it's done. And then once it's done, I can't recall if it's actually gonna tell you that it needs to restart the application or if it's just going to finish. 
but either way, you need to restart the application to have it actually implement the changes so that that documentation becomes available. Um, so let's see how long it's, okay, so mine's done running through, and you can see that update content files is now clear of any you know necessary updates, but restart application has a seven next to it for me, and we'll have more for you, meaning that there are seven ch pending changes that will not be available until you restart. So we'll go ahead and re restart the application. Do you want to restart application to reload content? Yes, automatically opens itself back up. And now, if it would open up on the correct window so that you guys can see it, uh, if we go to additional content, again, it's going to do a quick scan and it shouldn't come up with any necessary update content. If it does, you could rinse and repeat, you know, update the content, restart the application, but because you just did it, unless in the five seconds between when it shut down and restarted, something new got uploaded, you shouldn't have any necessary uh, content update files. So we'll ignore this for now, no need to let this run through. If you go over here to sources, you can see we have all of these lovely sources now. And yours may look different than mine. Yours most likely has everything checked. This is, again, my previous settings um, for the current campaign that we're running with our friend group. We're currently only using uh, Wizards of the Coast material, Player Handbook, Dungeon Master Guide, Monster Manual, and Sword Coast Adventure Guide, or SCAG. Um, we could use everything, but we have them turned off because we're using... Uh, we're having our friend Chris GM, and he's a newer GM, and so we didn't want to flood him with, like, just thousands of pages of material that he has to sort of like know and understand or at the very least be able to wrap his head around uh, you know when we start making wonky characters with items that he's never heard of before and abilities that he's never seen it'd just be too much so to keep it fair we kind of went with bare bones basic and sword coast just to add a little spice um, but assuming that yours looks a little more like this and you have everything checked when you look through these, you'll see that you now have all the source material. You have everything from Wizards of the Coast, everything from Adventurers League, all the Unearthed Arcana stuff, which are usually individual add-ins, um, third-party source stuff, and you can see who authored them, uh, and then you got your homebrew material, D&D Wiki, Mage Hand Press, Warlock Homebrew, all that stuff. Um, if you don't like homebrews, go ahead and turn all those off, and if you're like us and you don't want to flood your GM with, you know, ridiculous amounts of source material, you can go ahead and turn off all of these additional options and just leave on the Wizards of the Coast official stuff, which I'm sure is what a lot of people like to do, although, I mean, that's just as much kind of in for a dime, in for a dollar type of deal. Um, that's pretty much just as much material, so you might as well go with all of it. But anyways, once you've selected what you want to use, you can click Save as Default here in the corner, and then Restrict Playtest Material, and what it's going to do... Oh, I'll bring that up in a second what it is going to do is set it so that only that documentation is listed when you're going through character build. So for example, subclasses, if you're, or sub races, for example, if you select dwarf, there's usually, I want to say mountain dwarf and hill dwarf, is that right? I can't remember. I think it's mountain dwarf and hill dwarf. Um, there might be a third, like uh, Drogar, for example. Uh, that might be available from one of these texts, but if you have it unchecked, uh, when you go to build that character, that third option won't be listed. So it's only going to pull from sources that you have it pulled from, or that you have checked off here. And because you've saved it as the default, that's going to maintain every time you close and relaunch the application. You're not going to have to go in and consistently say, don't include these documents, or do include these documents. Um, so that's getting that set up. I'm not going to go through full character creation right now. Oh, one thing I do want to note, um, these colored dots here on Lokathath or Lokathath Rising, um, Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron and One Grung Above. Uh, those colored dots, if I recall, it doesn't say anywhere, anywhere on the screen, I believe those indicate that those are source material not yet released but or, or not yet reviewed. I think, uh, like I said, I think there's a group of people that work on maintaining all of this documentation and making sure that things like erratas and typos that are fixed after, uh, after initial release by Wizards of the Coast or whatever the author source is, um, they make sure that they go in and make those changes and make those edits. And I'm pretty sure that those dots indicate that either that's uh, an unreviewed document that's been uh, typed up by who, one of the authors, but that hasn't been like peer reviewed to make sure that it's accurate, or that it's a uh, early release of a material that's not available for sale yet. And so they're basically saying like, don't hold us to what's in this exactly. We're not, it's not finalized yet. Um, but However, uh, they are there, they are available. If you want to go with it, go ahead. If you don't trust them and you want to wait until they're finalized or whatever, uh, just wait until the dot is removed. It'll get updated automatically uh, because you have the indexes set up. So yeah, um, 
I think I'll do a separate video on character building because that's you've built characters in D&D, that's a whole process, and there's a lot to go with, especially when you have all this source material. Um, but this is Aurora, that's how you get it set up. Um, Aurora Builder, I should say. That's how you get set up. Um, it is by far the best tool, utility, application, program, whatever you want to call it, for D&D 5th Edition character building and maintenance, uh, as well as just general compendium. Um, I'll show you this real quick. If you select the search field up here in the corner, compendium, and you type in anything. Um, let's try Fireball, because that's a fun one. Uh, this is basically an encyclopedia of, uh, you know, of every source material that you've just plugged into it. So pretty much all of the source material, including homebrews. This is a massive encyclopedia, so you can pull up Fireball. There's the spell. There's all the detail on the spell. There's pretty much everything you need to about, know about it, including the source that it came from. Necklace of Fireballs, magical item from the Dungeon Master's Guide. There's all the info there. Wand of Fireballs, again, Dungeon Master Guide. Uh, Delayed Blast Fireball, that's a spell from the player's handbook, or a different spell from the player's handbook. Um, and that's probably, a, that's probably a poor example because these all came from basic sources. But uh, what if we do Owlbear? Is Owlbear another thing? Owl, why not? Um, and you can see it's pulling from all these different sources. Critical Role, the web's website, blog, I want to say website, D&D Wiki, Tomb of Annihilation, uh, Compendium of Forgotten Secrets, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, Mage Hand Press. It's pulling from everywhere because we didn't disable that many things. If we were to come back to the start menu here and we went to additional content, sorry, sources, additional content is for adding the indexes. We go to sources and we uncheck everything and we just say, uncheck this, and we just want Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, Monster Manual, and that's it. Don't pull from anywhere else. Save as default, restrict playtest material, and then we go back to our compendium. Uh, actually, this might not be the best example because compendium might this compendium might be the one thing that ignores uh, <laughs> your your limitations that you set here. But let's just see. So if I type in that same option, owl, and hit search, uh, yeah. So you're gonna see all the same stuff. But like I said, if you were going to build a character. So for example, let's just real quick, and I'm not going to go all the way through this, I just want to show as an example. If you click on new character, you get your new character setup bar over here. Don't read anything into this, I'll do a full character build walkthrough. Well, let's say it'll be my next video. Because um, I don't want you to be like, well how come there's only tiefling art? And like, don't worry about that. Um, we're going to skip all this stuff, we're just going to hit create character. I'm not going over any of that. I do like that if you don't give your character a name right off the bat, it calls it the nameless one. I think that's pretty funny. Um, it took me like five characters to realize that it was doing that as like a joke. Like, oh, you didn't name your character. He is the nameless one. Um, so anyways, <laughs> if you drop down race here. Uh, what have I done? Why am I getting no material? Apply source restrictions. Select restrict. Yeah. Well, of course, now I've broken it. Oh boy. Let's check this in menu and check all of these, although I'm fairly certain that's not necessary because, as you saw, even if you uncheck everything, the three main source materials maintain checked because they have to be. But let's just do it that way. Save default, uh, restrict playtest materials. Oh, you know what? Restrict playtest materials. I'm clicking the wrong button. That's my bad. Uh, the the colored dots, that's restrict playtest material. Um, what you want to do is save as default, apply source restrictions. I believe that's correct. Here we are. So, again, if you were to select new character, start a new character, and you come down here to race, you can see that there's nothing but stuff from the player's handbook here. There's no additional source material. Again, if you select dwarf, it's going to ask you to pick a sub-race, hill dwarf, mountain dwarf, only options from the player's handbook because we've eliminated everything else. If I go back to the start and I go back to sources and I turn on everything, they're all checked now, and I hit save as default, apply source restrictions, and we go back to build, we uncheck dwarf, or already you can see Dorgar is there, the mark of warding is there, whatever that is from Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron. Um, if we turn off dwarf, that's just, that's what that is. That's a little daunting. Um, I can go ahead and say I haven't played most of those. Uh, but you can see that now it's pulling from every source available, and that's only that's only the Wizards of the Source Coast. Uh, <laughs> Wizards of the Coast sources. 
uh, we didn't turn on any of these other ones. So if we turn on Adventures League, Unearthed Arcana, third party resources, we'll leave off homebrewed and whatever unidentified sources are. That's probably some new test material. And we hit save and we hit apply source restrictions and we go back to build. The list is even longer now. So, and I have noticed that when you do that, you will start to see some duplicates. So for example, here we have Goblin from Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Then you also have Goblin from Volo's Guide to Monsters, and then you also have Goblin from Plane Shift Zandikar. So, I, I mean, that's basically because depending on which source material book you bought, there might be a different flavor of Goblin in the three of those, and because the source materials don't line up perfectly, they've just included all three. So, um, but again, that's just part of using every single source material available, is you're going to see some duplicates. So, that's the long and short of it. This is Aurora Builder, completely free to use. All source material released by any source, including homebrew, completely free, at your fingertips, beautiful layout, easy to use. We'll go through character building next time. Uh, easy to create characters, easy to main maintain characters, the best character builder I've ever come across. Uh, I believe it only works for 5th edition, though I could be wrong, I've never tried to use it for anything else. Um, but it's better, better than any of the online source aggregators I've ever used. Uh, it's better than Orc Pub, it's better than the D&D, uh, &D, oh god, what's it called, D&D &D Beyond, which was originally free during the beta, and now most of the good stuff is locked behind a paywall. Uh, this is what you want to go with. So uh, I hope you guys give it a shot, check it out. Uh, it's really great. Uh, if, if you ever have any way of supporting them, I believe they have a donate uh, somewhere on their somewhere on their website. Um, if you want to try it out, if you like it, support them. Um, but other than that, I will see you guys next time, most likely with more Aurora Builder uh, for uh, character creation walkthrough, maybe some character maintenance. Other than that, you guys have a good day, and I will see you next time.